God is good. All the time. God is good. And God provides in ways that we can see and understand. And as we just sang there, there are times that God provides in ways that we would never have expected that God can work. Well, friends, today we're taking the next step in the worship series that we began last week entitled Conquering Anxiety. And I want to put all of your hearts and minds at rest for those of you who were here last week and heard Pastor Christopher's great message and heard him singing out these beautiful songs, I'm not going to (laughs) sing. So it'll be a good day. It'll be a good day. But he, he brought us into this series about how anxiousness and worry can so, so grab us and powerfully preach to us around God's promises in that. Well, I'm going to take the next step in that and really going to let the scripture for today unpack for us some real practical strategies for how do we deal with it when worry seems to overwhelm us, when anxiousness seems to swell up within us. And so this is one of those sermons where you actually might want to, you know, have a piece of paper and pencil out or pen out or or just have your phone out to jot down. Because as I lift up some of these strategies, these may be things that you're going to want to come back to this week and just go, like, yeah, that's one that I need to practice. So I lift that up. The other thing I want to lift up before we hear the scripture and dig in is I just want to acknowledge the difference between the worrying that happens for all of us, the anxiety that can happen in any of us, in all of us. And then some folks have what becomes clinically defined as an anxiety disorder. The strategies we're going to talk about can still speak into that reality, but if that's something that that you've wrestled with, been diagnosed with, that's something where you're probably needing to speak with a counselor as well. Maybe talk with your doctor about as well, too. So I just want to name that reality while also saying God's Word can speak into that, but God's Word is going to speak to all of us and how these dynamics play in our lives. So let's hear God's word today. Our reading today is from Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, Pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today we are going to let God speak into what is what I might almost call a pandemic that we are still facing today. A pandemic of worry and anxiety in our world. It affects adults. It affects youth, and tragically, more and more, it's affecting children as well. It seems as if no one is immune to these things that swell up and capture us in different ways. (laughs) I like this quote that I found this past week. It said, anxiety is a lot like a toddler. It never stops talking tells you you are wrong about everything, and wakes you up at 3 a.m. Isn't that a good description of anxiety? Long ago, there was a Swedish proverb that said it this way, worry often gives a small thing a big shadow. Friends, there are a lot of people living under big shadows today. But we come to worship Jesus, who is the light of the world, who can light a way through the shadows in our lives and take us on a path forward through it. So let's dig in. 
I want to start this morning by sharing a few definitions. Because in our common language, we often use the words worship, uh, worship, no, we don't use, worry, <laughs> worry, stress, and anxiety sort of interchangeably, but there's some important nuance and distinction there. Worry happens in your mind. Stress happens in your body. And anxiety happens in your mind and your body at the same time. Let me just take that apart a little bit more. Worry, as we know, is what happens when, when our minds dwell on uncertain things in the future, when there are uncertain outcomes that we can't control and we get caught worrying about them. Stress is what happens in our body when we sense a threat out in the world. Literally, our limbic system kicks in and adrenaline and cortisol starts coursing through our body and we get all revved up and charged up and ready to take on that threat that's in front of us. That's what stress does. You know what, we've heard that old fight or flight reaction when something is coming at me. And anxiety is when we're, our mind is caught in like multiple worries, like about this and this and this, like we can't even get our hand on it. It's just sort of this indistinct worry that's out there that then charges up inside of us, but because it's not clear what we're actually worried about, we just stay stuck in that agitation. That's anxiety. And that we all know <laughs> is a painful reality to work in. Now let me be clear here this morning, though, that a little focused worry can actually be a good thing. If your teacher tells you, have it, tells you you have a text test next Tuesday, or your boss says, I need this presentation by next Wednesday, you might start kicking into worry a little bit about those things. And that worry in your mind, like, how am I going to do this? What do I need to do? will start maybe charging up, get you a little bit stressed inside. And as that adrenaline kicks in, it actually helps you to start focusing and get energized to tackle the project. God has designed our bodies and our minds in that way. A little bit of worry is a good thing. Because it gets us focused to accomplish the challenge in front of us. But when a mom says to her, so when a mom says to her teenage son, hey, are you studying for the test next week? And while playing his video game, their son responds, I'm fine, mom. I don't need to study. I know this stuff. I'm not worried at all. Then mom gets worried. Because if he's not worried, he's not focused on maybe the work that needs to happen. When it comes to a Monday, and I know I'm preaching that coming weekend, I start to get a little worried. Will I have a word from God to bring to God's people? But that worry starts to create a little something charging inside of me, and that little bit of stress that I start to feel begins to get me like, okay, time to pray, time to study, time to prepare so that I have something to share. The truth is, you are all glad that I get a little worried on Monday. <laughs> or who knows what would come out on Saturday or Sunday. A little worry is a good thing. But the problem is when we get stuck in worry and we don't move forward to act. Or we get stuck in anxiety and we don't even know how to act, what to do. Everything is spinning in here and churning in here. And we just stay stuck in that place. Churned up, stirred up, and eaten up. <sighs> Friends, God doesn't want that for you. And God's word has a way for us to move through that into what God intends for our lives. So let's first look at worry. Again, as I said, a, a little bit of worry can help. If, if I'm a little worried about my health and it causes me to pick up the phone and call my doctor and set up an appointment, that's a good thing. 
But if I'm worried about a health situation that I had before, and I keep wondering, is it going to come back? Is it going to come back? Is it going to come back? And I just sit in that and stew in that. Well, you know what that does to us. Corey Ten Boom, the great Christian writer, said, worrying doesn't empty tomorrow of its sorrow. It empties today of its strength. And Leo Biscaglia says, worry never robs tomorrow of its sorrow. It only saps today of its joy. God doesn't want you to lose your strength or your joy today. So how do we stop worrying and move through that? Today I want to lift up briefly five strategies from Scripture for how to work through the worry and anxiety that can grab us. So first of all, if worry is a matter of our thinking, then the first strategy is we have to change some of our thinking. We have to change our perspective. That's what Paul does when he's writing to the Christians in Philippi, and he writes this line, Remember, the Lord is coming soon. He wanted to remind those believers in Philippi that in the midst of all the things that they could get all worried and worked up about in their life, there's a bigger story in play. Jesus will return. And in our lives, friends, we can hear this as a reminder to us that this life is not all there is. At some point, we will come to the end of this life or Jesus will return in the middle And either way, all of these things that so agitate us and cause us to worry will be in the rearview mirror. You know the rules. Rule number one, don't sweat the small stuff. Rule number two, it's all... You bet. From the perspective of eternity, friends, the things that so get us riled up are small. Too often, like the Swedish proverb says, we let small things cast a big shadow in our lives, and we've got to change our perspective. We've got to step back, as Paul says, and see it from God's perspective. Of course, a wise person once pointed out this truth. Our worry comes not from thinking about the future, but trying to control the future. Our minds spinning in worry, oh, what could happen? What's going to happen? It's our way of trying to feel like we have some control of what's coming down the road. And the truth is we can't control it. We can't hold the future. But friends, we can know the one who holds our future. Look at the cross. The God who created you, the God who knit you together in your mother's womb, also sent his son into the world, we believe, to show his love for us. If God God loves us this much in this moment, in the past and in this moment, he certainly is going to love us in the future and hold us in the future. We need to claim that perspective. Here's strategy number two. We need to learn the line. Turn to your neighbor and say, you need to learn the line. Now you're all asking, what's the line? Well, let me tell you. Is there something out in front of you that you're worrying about? Maybe something at school, something in work, something in your health. Well, friends, there is a line out in front of you. On this side of the line are all the things that you can do about that thing that's coming. If you're worried about your health, you could, you can think about what can I be eating right? How do I uh, get the exercise that I need? Am I seeing the doctors? Those are all the things that are on my side of the line. The things that are on that side of the line are the things that I can't control. And what we need to do is to learn where that line is and do the things on our side and the stuff on the other sides. That's what we got to surrender to God. 
That's what we need to turn over to the one who created us and makes us and holds our future. If you've got a geometry test coming next week, where's the line? What do I need to study? What are the notes I can look at? What's the book that I can review? But at some point, you don't control what problems the teacher's going to put on their test. And unless you hack the school system and get in that way, you just can't control that. You've got to turn that over to God. What's on our side of the line, we can do something about. But when we start trying to do stuff on the other side of the line, friends, that's when the worry kicks in. That's when we're trying to control what we simply can't control. Friends, to conquer worry, we need to learn where that line is and stay on our side of the line. Because when we try to go on the other side of the line, that is what saps us of our strength and saps us of our joy today. And God doesn't want that for you. Turn to your neighbor and say, stay on your side of the line. <laughs> Friends, we can trust the unknown future to the God that we know. So one final time, turn to your neighbor and say, God's got your future. Friends, these are crucial strategies when we're worrying about something specific. Changing your perspective on it, learning the line. But when we're dealing with the anxiety that, that swells up where it just feels like there's, we're not even sure what we're all anxious about. Well, we need more tools than that. Because that anxiety is not simply a matter of what's going on up here. It's what's going on in our whole body. And sometimes we need to address the body first. So when we're struggling with anxiety and you're just having those feelings that are swelling up within you, here's strategy three. It's very simple. Get moving. Movement and exercise are two powerful strategies for dealing with that, those anxious feelings, with all that adrenaline that's coursing through us. We can't just simply think it away. It's there that our body needs at some level to work it out. So when you're feeling that anxiety swell within you, some of the best things to do is go for a walk, go for a jog, go to the gym. And the truth is, that isn't just Kendall speaking. Scripture gives us a profound example of it. In the Old Testament, when the, the people of Israel were at the edge of the Red Sea, and the Egyptian army was behind them, the sea was in front of them, God had not opened the way yet, but they're all caught in their fear and anxiousness of what is coming. And in Exodus chapter 14, God says to Moses, literally, get the people moving. <laughs> it's so easy to just get stuck in your anxiousness and feel it all. He said, get moving. And then God made a way and they went by on dry land. The fourth strategy comes from our New Testament scripture today as I heard it in a fresh way, as I reflected on this past week, where Paul wrote these, this great line, always be full of joy in the Lord. Again, I say it, rejoice. God is reminding us that joy and laughter are powerful antidotes for the anxiousness that can creep into our hearts. <clears throat> Find joy and laugh. In the New Testament, there was a time where Paul and Silas these two leaders in the Christian church were arrested for the preaching that they had been doing. And they were thrown in jail, locked up. I have not been in jail, but I have a feeling I would have been quaking in my boots. You don't know someone else is in control of your future. You don't know what's going on. You don't know how long this has lasted. You don't know if you're going to be tortured. You don't know if you're going to go on trial. You don't know anything. It would be a prime place to be caught up in anxiety. But you know what Paul and Silas did when they were in prison? Anyone know that, this account? They started singing their heads off. They sang as loud as they could at the top of their lungs in prison. Was it because they were feeling all happy? No. They were scared, but they also knew one of the antidotes for anxiety is to claim the joy that we have in God. 
claim the truth that we have a God who knows us and holds us. And so, so they sang. Eventually, God broke them out of the darn jail. Friends, finding laughter and joy, even in our stressful times, can be a breakthrough through it. I remember when our kids were in junior high and high school, oftentimes, I mean, those are important years, great years and challenging years, and they'd come home from school and they'd be kind of stressed out. They'd be worried about what was coming and just anxious about dynamics with friends and just sort of caught in that. And Connie and I, my wife and I, would try to listen to them and talk with them and, you know, and, and sort of empathize and, and just try to be supportive. And sometimes that helped. And sometimes it didn't. For those of you who are parents of teenagers, you know, sometimes it, 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 you don't seem to get through that one. So Connie often tried another strategy. She would start teasing them. She'd start poking fun at something and teasing and needling them a little bit. Now, do you think they liked that? <laughs> no, of course, they hated it. Mom, cut it out. But she'd stay at it. Just a little more, a little more, a little more. And then they'd start cracking a smile. And then before you knew it, they were laughing in spite of themselves. And friends, anxiety and laughter can't go together. When you start laughing, when you start belly laughing, that anxiety goes away. Now, can it come back afterwards? Of course. But laughter is a powerful way to break through. Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. But of course, friends, our most powerful tool to combat anxiety is prayer. Don't worry about anything, Paul says. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need, and then thank him for all that he has done. Friends, prayer is not a task that we have to do. It is medicine for our souls. Don't worry about anything. Pray about everything. Prayer is the tool to release our burdens to God. Prayer is the way that we take those things that are weighing so heavy on our shoulders and put them on God's shoulders. And God's shoulders are a lot bigger than yours or mine. And friends, prayer invites God's action. Prayer invites God to, to pour his strength and his power and his passion into these situations that are clearly beyond our ability to address but they're not beyond God, who is so much bigger than your worries and my worries and all of our problems. And prayer also opens my eyes, opens my eyes to begin to see God at work in the world. When I'm just caught in my anxiousness and my worry, all I'm doing is looking inside at myself and my problems. Prayer opens my eyes and begins to allow me to glimpse God at work in the world and glimpse the solutions that God might be leading me into. And friends, when we give our worries and our anxious thoughts to God, we get a promise today in Scripture that I get to leave you with. Hear again these words from God's Word to us. For Paul says, when we do these things, then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything that we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and your minds as you live in Christ Jesus. May we learn these practices that we can open ourselves up to the peace that God longs to give. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, we come to you today, and Lord, there's just stuff that weighs on us. Things in our own personal lives, things in our nation, in our world, and Lord, they're big, and sometimes they can weigh so, so heavy. So Lord, we just come to you today, and we just ask you to take them, 
They're too big for us, but they're not too big for you. Lord, we just ask that you would change our perspective and help us to remember where that line is so that we stay on our side and don't venture into what is only your territory. Lord, we just pray that you would fill us with your peace. Lord, help us to drain that anxiousness into your lap so that we might stand up refreshed and ready. Lord, help us to truly learn to trust our lives to you that we might find the peace that you long to give. In the powerful name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen.